Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this MSI motherboard. This is a P67A C43 motherboard from MSI. It supports Intel Generation 2 core processors, Core i3, i5, and i7. It features the 1155 socket and also the B3 revision of the Cougar Point chipset. Let's take a closer look at the box itself. As we can see, MSI is supporting this motherboard with a three-year manufacturer warranty. Uh, as well as Windows 7 support, uh, there's the Generation 2 Core logo, as well as the P67 chipset. Around here on the back, we can see a few additional features. Uh, right here, they're talking about the components they're using uh, for stability and quality military class 2 components. Uh, the super ferrite chokes, as well as the uh, capacitors that they're using on the board. Uh, they're just higher quality, they will last longer, they'll provide you uh, more reliability as well as the uh, VRM area will provide additional power to the so uh, CPU socket so you can help out with overclocking. Uh, down here on the bottom left you can see they have, are featuring their OC Genie 2. Uh, that's a button on the motherboard that you can push. You can also enable in the BIOS for easy overclocking. This board does feature an EFI BIOS, so you, it has a click enabled, and also the EFI BIOS, which is forward compatible with lots of stu stuff such as booting from uh, mechanical hard drives that are three terabytes or larger. Finally, over here, we have, again, the instant overclock. There's a feature called Winky 3, which is sort of a pseudo uh, light operating system that you can boot into to do some uh, basic tasks, and THX quality uh, internals for uh, the sound card. Also, we, of course, have uh, USB 3.0 support, as well as serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second support. That being said, let's go ahead and get this out of the box. Alright, so right here on top we can see our included accessories. There is an installation driver CD. Recommend to download the latest drivers from the website if you have internet access. That's always the best bet. Here's your input-output shield for the back of your case. We have a black and white quick installation guide, which goes over quite a few items. This is also multiple languages. There you go, for quick installation, quick guide right there. Here is the full installation manual. Actually, this is the manual for the software applications that are included. Here is your motherboard manual itself. Make sure to keep this on hand so you can reference items such as the correct DIMM slots to install your memory to and your input outputs for your uh, front panel of your computer case. Uh, here are a couple of headers for USB. If you have a case that has these all hanging loosely, you can plug them into that. It just helps them keep a bit more organized to plug them into your motherboard. Serial ATA cables, of course. They have included two white serial ATA cables. One of these has an L bracket on one end. And this is a nice little product here. This looks like a USB 3.0 adapter of some kind. And I'm going to check the manual to see exactly how this use is has a USB 3.0 plug on one end, which leads to something else that's wrapped up on the other end. So I'll get back to that. I can tell you guys exactly what that does. That is all for accessories. Up next is the motherboard itself. All right, guys, so there is a look at the motherboard itself, top to bottom, side to side. And I'm just going to start with uh, this side over here and sort of go over all the different ports and connectors and features of this motherboard. Uh, starting off with our serial, a serial ATA connectors, which are right here. You see these two, blight one, two white ones, two black ones here, and two more black ones there. Uh, the ones that might potentially conflict with your video, video card are angled, so you can still plug those in without them running in if you're using a longer sized video card. Uh, the white ones are SATA revision 3, 6 gigabits per second. Uh, the four black ones here are SATA revision 2, 3 gigabits per second. Next to those, we can see a couple three-pin fan headers. And then uh, right down here are our front panel connectors. And MSI has an M connector set. These two little items right here uh, basically lets you take your front panel plugs from your case, which are usually sort of loose and hanging with little uh, pin headers. Plug them into that, and then you plug this uh, into the front panel connector there. So it lets you collect all those and makes it a bit easier to connect your front panels, which is very convenient. Next up is this little port right here, which some of you might uh, see and think it is a USB 3.0 port. That is uh, the typical size for a USB 3.0 front panel header on a motherboard. However, uh, in this particular version, it's actually being used 
as a splitter to power a couple USB 2.0 ports. Uh, so bear that in mind if you buy this board. There are two USB 3.0 ports on the uh, rear input output panel back here, uh, but this little jumper uh, expansion here is actually meant for this plug, which will give you an additional two USB 2.0 ports. Uh, next up, we have an additional USB 2.0 uh, front panel header. Uh, a few other pin connectors here, which you don't really need to worry about. Uh, this is an SPDIF audio connector that routes, you can route up to your uh, DVD or CD-ROM. Uh, over here on the side is our front panel connector for our HD audio, so you can plug that in and connect your front panel mic and headphones. Next up is input, uh, I'm sorry, PCI slots. And we have a single 16 speed PCI Express slot right there. Um, so this board is really made for single graphics card use. It does not support SLI, but if you're just gonna be using a single graphics card, you wanna plug it in right there, that is full 16 speed capable. Next to that, we have three single speed PCI Express ports there, as well as three legacy PCI slots uh, further down the board. So for your legacy devices that are using the older PCI interface, you have three options for that. <clears throat> Moving right along, uh, here we have another three pin fan header. And let's go ahead and talk about our inputs and outputs on the back of the board. All right, so here you have the analog uh, outputs for your sound card as well as mic input. And that is controlled by Realtek ALC892 uh, sound card. All right, here, as mentioned, are your two USB 3.0 rear panel ports. Uh, along with that, you have an additional eight USB 2.0 inputs uh, here in the black ports going in all along this side. Above that is our gigabit Ethernet connection. That is a Realtek RTL8111E gigabit Ethernet plug. Here we have coax audio out as well as, S, as, well as a uh, Toslink audio out. And then finally right here is usually a CMOS reset switch. All right, just a few more items to go over for this motherboard. Right here is our main power connector, 24 pin, to plug your power supply into. Above that, we can see our DDR3 slots. This supports up to four DDR3 DIMMs, and it can overclock your DDR3 memory up to 20, uh, 2,133 uh, megahertz, which uh, is only, of course, if your memory you purchase supports that. Standard memory speeds are 1066 or 1333. Uh, and this, is, this will support dual channel, so always recommend to buy a pair of two memory sticks so you can take advantage of dual channel mode. Uh, right above that is our PWM CPU fan plug. Right there, the four pin. Next to that is one additional chassis fan header, three pin. And then here we can see uh, the socket area as well as all of the VRM modules that are right there. Uh, plenty of space, I'm happy to say, around the CPU socket. They're doing passive cooling for all of our VRMs, so um, there's plenty of space there if you're going to use an aftermarket CPU cooler. Here is our 1155 socket with its protective plastic cover. And then right up here is our 4 or 8 pin uh, supplemental power plug for the CPU that will support either a ATX 12 volt 4 pin or EPS 8 pin plug depending on what your power supply has. Real quick before I leave you guys I did want to show you the bottom of the motherboard. This does have a nice brown PCB so overall the color scheme is brown, black, and blue. Fairly subdued, fairly low key but has a nice look overall. Also they have used spring-loaded Phillips head screws to mount the passive heat sink for your P67 chipset. So Nice that the P67 chipset can be cooled passively uh, because chipset fans do tend to make a lot of noise for motherboards that do have them. But this motherboard will make no noise because the chipset is passively cooled. That wraps it up for our unboxing and overview. This has been the MSI P67A C43 motherboard from MSI. 1155 socket P67 chipset supports Intel Generation 2 Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. Thanks for watching. My name's Paul. We'll see you next time on Newegg TV.